We are rolling. Dun, 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 dun. channel beyond the silver screen. I almost mispronounced that. This here is Daniel, as you might know. I I am Adam. <laughs> <laughs> will not be doing this accent for the whole video, as I was. I was just fucking around. Yeah, so we are talking about the motherfucking Terminator. Yeah. Terminator! As we all know, Terminator is a classic of action movie filmmaking made by James Cameron. Um, we're, we, we're, today we're only talking about the first movie in the franchise, so not the most well-known and most popular and most iconic film in the Terminator saga, which is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. However, Terminator 1 is still uh, well-known for being a great film, which I think it is. I, I don't think the angle does, but we'll get into that. Um, yeah, so I am actually excited to talk about this one. I think that James Cameron as a director is fairly overrated. But this is actually one of his movies where he does stick the landing and gets the, the, the credit, that, like, rightfully gets praised for. <laughs> so, come with me if you want to live, and join us in this episode of Fresh Perspective. I don't know, I just wanted to say it. You nailed it. Of course I did. <laughs> Alright, so what are, you, what are your thoughts? Still the beans. Um, when was the movie made again? 1970? Um, it's the 1980s, 80s? I believe. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the year with me. And also, oh, fair warning, uh, this just reminded me. This movie is, uh, oh, sorry, this review is with spoilers. We're not going to have a spoiler-free section because this is a classic, and if you haven't seen it, you're either not going to see it or you don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think it's perfectly fine to have it be a spoiler review, but just be warned, I guess. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. I think. Uh, okay, let me organize. Work. The first thing I would like to point out of the film is the incredible prostheses that they made. Prosthetics? Uh, is it prosthetic? Is, is, that, is, that is that a word? So, pros prosthetic is an adjective, apparently. So, I learned this. Okay, so for all you out there who are trying to build a prosthetic arm, the word prosthetic is an adjective, and it's added after any kind of component noun that you're trying to say. So if I say, I'm creating a prosthetic arm. And so prosthetic here is the noun. Arm is, oh shoot, my, English is not my first language. Prosthetic English is right the there. adjective, arm is the noun. So I don't know if you could do like a, like a, I, I, I don't know, can no, you CGI no, words? No I, no, I mean, I could, but that's too much effort. <laughs> <sighs> okay. But I feel like you made your point. <laughs> <laughs> now, the word pros prosthesis um, is a noun. So you would say, you know, upper limb prosthesis. And if the plural form is upper limb prostheses. Are you, like, sure about all this? I am definitely sure, man. I went to competitions. No, I mean, I'm not saying that, like, I, I doubt your credibility. I'm just saying that, like... It's okay. English is my second wow, language. So. how wrong <laughs> everybody in the world is who speaks English. Exactly. Because nobody, like, everybody uses prosthetics as a noun. Right, yeah, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I guess. Like, I mean, it's, it's news to me. Like, I... Well, now you know. Now, everyone watching this, do tell your friends that they have been using the word prosthetic for, like, the wrong, like, usage for their entire lives. Change them so they could be better people. All right. Now that that's uh, over with, mm -hmm. you know you know the info. You know, let's get into the movie. Let's get into the movie. What's up with the prosthesis? I love the prosthesis. I love the makeup, and I love the puppets. I, 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 I absolutely love them. Um... I, I loved, okay, so the beginning scene where they had a bunch of flying saucers in the sky, that was, eh, that was, that was okay. I, I for, for consider, a, consider the time it was made. Consider the time, it's, it's like great, the most, solid. It, it is solid, yeah, I know, but like, like looking now, it's like, meh. The, 
but if we look at the actual Terminator robot, like that when it's not CGI, when it's not CGI, because like, when it's CGI, I don't want to fucking look at yeah, it. Yeah, when, when <laughs> it, it, it's like King Kong. <laughs> it's like the first King Kong movie. We should also do King Kong, like oh boy, was, <laughs> the OG of puppets. Yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> that at a later time, <laughs> unspecified time. Like it was. The actual robot is amazing. They got a lot of, like, if you look at the bionics of, like, look at the architecture of the arm, it's actually pretty accurate. It's a pretty accurate hand. Um, just looking at the, um, just looking at the skeleton and looking at how they made the connections between each uh, fingers, it was done, it was done pretty, pretty well. Um, the, the general, uh, ratios of the body was done really well so you don't have like a super enlarged fingers or you don't have like super super long arms that you would generally see in um in a lot of like robots like they would have long arms and i'm sorry they'll have long arms and like their, their arms are almost like to their to to, to like the, the the belly of of the, of the foot and no they got like pure like the dimensions are, are phenomenal um architecture was great uh re i really liked how they had it, it was it was like ultron you know it was like a better version of ultron like that like a much better version a, of a much better version of ultron <laughs> the schedule I, I don't hate the movie but like a much much better right version. the only good thing about ultron was robert california and <laughs> <laughs> that like all life is sex beep <laughs> and all sex Competition. It's competition. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do a TV series review. You got to talk oh. about Robert California. <laughs> Actually, I I don't know whether or not this will air before or after, but Ainesh and I are releasing a a very detailed video on The Office where oh. we oh. talk about like separate seasons in in different videos. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. Or maybe you already loved it. I don't know what this will air. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be great. And it is going to be huge. And Dinah's just gonna pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> we need to cut this. <laughs> okay. Uh I really like the design of the Terminator for its time being. The skeleton uh, design the skeletal design and the solid core made a very menacing robot. Um, uh, yeah, so it's like it's really creepy and how strong and how powerful the robot is. Like, it's not creepy in the sense that you know it's sexual, like <laughs> like the like alien. the alien, right? Like the alien. So the alien made its creepiness through it made its fear made its fear through creepiness, right? Like making the alien look like Gentalia. No, honestly, like if you want to say that um, the fear in Alien was made through sex, you're you're not that much wrong. No, I'm not. It was practically made by Robert California. That is <laughs> all life is sex. Thank you for, for <laughs> saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a universal truth, Toby. <laughs> but here they achieved a fear through sheer power, like sheer strength, you know, sheer, uh, like bodybuilding, like, and then sheer mechanics. Bodybuilding, you could say like, that again. Yeah, that's like- Arnold Schwarzenegger Ar definitely and that, did Arnold, his bodybuilding. Exactly, and they got Arnold Schwarzenegger for the film. I think the, the whole like highlight of the movie is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's it's, the selling point. I know. Mr. Like, Olympia. Exactly, he is so, uh, fucking hot. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's no such thing as a product. Please stop. <laughs> he is very. Another thing I found is cool is um, again the puppets. There was a scene where he used the scalpel knife and oh yeah, freaking, like took out his eye. That was. You know, some say that it was. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, doing an improv, 
<laughs> it was just that good. Because <laughs> it was just that good. No, the improv part was when he opened up his arm. Oh, when he opened up his arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Knife. Yeah, that, that was, was improv. improv. That was improv. Okay, okay. The, the, the eyeball, that was, that was puppet. <laughs> yeah, the, the part where he shoots a woman in, the, <laughs> in her apartment, that's, that's the improv. <laughs> that's the improv. <laughs> He's so menacing, you know, and like so powerful that he made a very, very awesome villain. Yeah. You know? and, and also the music track is like... Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the it's, camera's like shaking it. Like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's Which like it should be. How menacing it is, you know. It's like, wow, that's... That's a wonderful motif there. And then a very, very, like, heroic, romantic uh, musical motif for the, um, for the hero. Like, dun, 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 dun. It almost felt like the, like, when I was listening to it, I was like, is someone playing, like, Wii Sports or something like that? I was like, da 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 <laughs> That's literally Wii Sports. And so sometimes I just keep laughing and, like, the heroes are, like, fighting off Arnold Schwarzenegger and then it's like, Da 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 we boxing. Yeah. While we're on this subject, I will say yeah. it's not exactly relevant to just Terminator, but it's very interesting how uh in the second movie in this franchise, Terminator 2, to Terminator's theme gets completely recontextualized from the villain's theme into the hero's theme. Oh. Because in that movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger is like the protagonist who plays the role of um Kyle Reese. Un unhealthy. I haven't seen the second movie, so honestly... Well, I mean, you will. I will. And we will make a video on it separately, I assure Definitely. you, because it's, yeah. it's Terminator 2, goddammit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting how they recontextualize the music. Interesting. Um, just a minor point I wanted to make. Okay. Because it's like, you really remember the... Da -da -da, da -da -da. You, you'll get it. <laughs> what the you'll get that? it. <laughs> okay. I have so many questions right now. You should. It's just that, yeah. Because I took, okay, so I took a musicology, sci-fi musicology class, and then we would analyze... And you didn't fucking watch Terminator. The that movie. is stupid. Not, that is ridiculous. The Terminator. No disrespect to the professor. Who <laughs> <laughs> will never watch this. Hey, yeah. Come on, the Terminator. We did yeah, watch a lot of real. films. Um, you, we watched some together. We watched uh, Space Odyssey. <laughs> Fucking blue babe. We it's we like, we made a hell was we made a whole it? podcast episode which actually aired very recently separately dedicated to two thousand one Space Odyssey. Go check it out. Yeah, I I will say I'm the only person in the room in that podcast who's like I don't I, I I honestly do not like this film. I appreciate a lot of stuff about it, but I don't like it. It was it was very cool. It was just way too slow. Though. Yeah, unlike the Terminator. Unlike the Terminator, which is fast paced. It's like, still okay. What, okay, do you want to say something about me? I, I want to say a lot about this film. Go so ahead. I think that while Terminator 2 is the like the action movie, when you think about American Hollywood 80s action, there is no movie that encompasses that more than uh, Terminator 2. It's also more kid-friendly, and I think for that reason it was more well-received and therefore more influential for, for American and just Western pop culture. However, this film has something special about it that the second movie really does not. Uh, the villain here is uh, brutal and terrifying in ways that the Liquid Terminator, I think it's like T-1000 uh, or whatever, from Terminator 2 cannot afford to be. And that's not because of the fact that it's a Liquid Terminator. In fact, um, I believe that James Cameron initially wanted the Terminator to be also made out of liquid metal in this film, but he couldn't due to constraints in like due to the time the movie was made because they did not have the effects available at the time so i think coming back to my point that the reason that arnold schwarzenegger is this terrifying in this film is because it's not afraid to be brutal it's not afraid to be truly r-rated not like kid-friendly r-rated like um, terminator 2 is but truly cruel merciless and brutal just like the force that is hunting down kyle reese and sarah connor um, this movie is ridiculously tense. This movie is very, very well paced. And it's just a singular, strong, never ending narrative that starts and keeps going until it's over and the Terminator is dead. And I think that this is something that this movie is truly exceptional at. I love this film. 
if you if you can't tell. Okay, that was that was my intro take. Now you wanted to say something. To me, I think it was an okay action film because I didn't really appreciate the plot too much. It kind which of got, is not the the highlight of the film. Which is not the highlight of the film, no. And so I thought I thought the film was missing something, and I couldn't really wrap my head around what it actually is missing. I just felt like. It was... You love Terminator 2. It was... I, I think I, you will. I, I probably will, and I don't know, I have to watch it to... Fair to enough. Com- compare but I, think, it. I really think you will. The, um... The plot twist of, like... Kyle Reese being the father of, like, the general that sent him... John Connor. John Connor to the... I find it ridiculous that John Connor, because at the end we we learned that Sarah Connor did tell John Connor about like Kyle Reese being his dad. So right. <laughs> John Connor was like, "So here's a picture of my mom for, yeah. for no reason." Right. And here, here you go. Please, Steven. please jerk off in front of this photo. <laughs> love this photo. Make love to which it. which he admits to. And this is like, like to Sarah Connor. exactly to Sarah Connor, and it's so frustrating for the fact you wrap my head now like once that like was revealed the, the song like mother lover just keeps playing <laughs> in the back of my head well, it's awkward it's, it's definitely like, like so like, awkward it's it's a gray area but i feel like we've just as as a culture we've learned to accept the terminator no well well no not no well, i'm not gonna accept the fact no i'm that... not saying that we learn to accept what happens in the terminator <laughs> because that is just fucking weird that is weird. what we learn to accept is the fact that the terminator deals with time travel in, in that particular context that was okay mm. and i mean people don't give a shit because they just love those movies at least the first two the what what comes after that i don't give a shit about but mm. t1 and t2 i just love them i just love them i, just love them. I do i really do mm. I think there was a trend of like time travel and like people killing robots, like people like like killer robots was like a big thing when when the Terminator was was created. Like I think there was a huge talk about all of that. It's it's kind of interesting. Oh, I forgot why. So sci-fi films changed. Uh, I think there were like. There are three main phases for sci-fi films in history. The first one is like just like action flicks is like, oh, there's a monster, oh, there's a creepy scientist, and then like, oh, there's aliens. So that, that those were the three main um, uh, sci-fi films, and they all follow a very very simple pattern. It was like, you know, there's a hero, they meet either a scientist or a monster or an alien. Keep, talk, keep talking. I'm, I'm right here. Okay. Okay. The yeah, so basically, the first, uh, the first series of sci-fi film consists of a hero meeting a villain, which is either a scientist, an alien, or a monster, and they would, um, they would, the reward is usually a girl, who is sometimes, you know, the scientist's daughter, or uh, a, a monster who, a monster or an alien who abduct, abducted a woman. And then the hero saves the woman, and then like happily ever after. Like all yeah, that's that's a very traditional take on yeah, it. and like, like an adventure story exactly. And so th- those were the first sci-fi films, and then there were the sci-fi films like Planet of the Apes. So now that there was the Planet of the Apes. there was the Planet of the Apes. So the first one, and that completely wrapped around people's perspective on sci-fi film. Because sci-fi film now becomes more about uh, reflecting social issues with the aliens or the monsters or the scientists being the other and the rest of society being um, society. And it's the society trying to deal with the other and trying to reflect upon either fear of technology or you know civil rights or uh, morality. And like all the like deep stuff now, yeah. Trying to, and I feel like the Terminator uh, in this in this time period of making these new innovative films, making like 
writerly films, as as you would call it. There's readerly films and then writerly films. They will call it. I would I would think this is a writerly film. Okay, can I put in? Sure. Like what you're saying could very well be true. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's highly likely that James Cameron was influenced by the media that was popular at the time. Mm -hmm. That said, um, according to James Cameron himself, I, I mean, if we if we go completely according to James Cameron himself, then he saw the Terminator in a dream, and then made, and then he made a movie. No, that's legitimately what he said. And he was so terrified of that dream <laughs> that he decided to make a Terminator One. This is but wow. like I I'm not gonna I don't know whether or not that's true. Maybe it was, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely do think that the concept of the Terminator just exists. It's, it's, he asked what happens when a truly unstoppable force tries to get you. Mm -hmm. When the threat cannot be stopped, destroyed, killed, um, right. like bargained with, merciless, completely merciless robot. And that's where it came from. It's almost like a horror film, in mm -hmm. a sense. It's like one step away from a horror film. Mm -hmm. But it's just so action-packed that it kind of delves into a different genre. But I think the basis like behind it, the structure, not the story structure, but the, the um, not the way the, the story is constructed, but what the story actually is, is very much just a horror movie that has a lot that's of fair enough, in it. Fair enough, yeah. Sorry, I, once again, as I said, you may very well be correct. I just wanted to lay, lay it on the table. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, now that I think about it, it is uh, about uh, two people trying to escape from an unstoppable force. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, but the action is just way really cooler. Like, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, no, the action is hella cool. Yeah. It's especially for its time, but like, even nowadays, <clears throat> that movie is watchable and enjoyable. Which is surprising for, for a movie that relies on its effects for the most part to be effective. Its effects are amazing. They I, are. I like they are dated. They're, they're often, definitely dated. Yeah, but they are they are amazing truly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's really fascinating to talk about this film in in context of once again Terminator Two, mm -hmm. because not only is it a switch in um, the manner in which the Terminator is portrayed as a threat. But it's also like such a switch in genres too, because where the Terminator one, Terminator One is really a horror film with a lot of explosions and gunfights in it, but Terminator Two is like the most classic '80s action film you could get. It's like it's essentially Commando, also with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hmm. Uh, it's it's just so fascinating how one director took an idea that was based around the concept that is truly just horror, and made it into like one of the most kid-friendly movies with murder <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and you're, damn, you're you're really hyping up the second movie. Most people think it's better. I, uh, from a technical standpoint, it is absolutely one hundred percent better. I. But you favor the first one more. I don't favor the first one more. I think they're so different that I kind of treasure them both. I see. Okay. So but, it's almost like Alien 1 and Aliens? Yeah, Alien but Alien 1, like Alien and Aliens, I think that Alien is a far superior film. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Aliens, I enjoy them, but there are plenty issues with Aliens, which, which we both well, we stated. We haven't talked about in, in Go the... check out that video! <laughs> <laughs> this, however, is not the case here. I think Terminator 1 has more issues than Terminator 2, but the switch in genres completely justifies those issues. Mm. Because Terminator 1 kind of has to have those issues. Uh, most, of, most of them are story issues and the lack of character growth, which once again, they, they, get, they get rid of in Terminator 2, but Terminator 2 is um, a character-driven film about a Terminator learning what it means to be human. So of oh, course it's serious. going to be character-driven, whereas this film is about uh, fuck, escape. Like, and, and that's all it is, really. And it does that very, very well. It truly succeeds at what it sets out to do. Mm. One of the few times when James Cameron, in my opinion, like truly, truly sticks the landing. That is like Terminator One and Two, because Aliens is like it's it's good, but I don't think it's great. I, don't, I many people disagree with that, but I think don't think it's quite great. Avatar, I think, is just plainly overrated. Not the show, the, the movie made by James Cameron. Yeah, it's a rant. It's it's we we talk about it a lot as beyond the silver screen with like I talk with the other co-hosts of stuff about this channel and. Mm -hmm. 
Most of them do love James Cameron. That's probably an upcoming episode we will eventually have, but... This is, this is the few movies where I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm on board. Yeah. Um, what did you dislike the most about Terminator? What did I dislike the most? Yes. What did you dislike the most? Uh... I didn't like the in, uh, the beginning phase of introducing um, introducing the characters. There was all of them. Uh, the sequence of introducing all the characters was a sprawl to me, so I didn't really know who to focus on um, when I when I started watching the film, um, and that sort of like plays a huge part in how I start to perceive the film because there's a there's just a lot of sprawl there's like a lot of action uh a lot of escaping like they stop at one spot and they're like oh shit we got found out and like oh shoot i i made a terrible decision phoning um yeah sarah turn. connor was just stupid in that scene. yeah so it was just like to me it was like like you said people do dumb things in train to Busan. i think like people do dumb things in terminator one it's like it's only really that one dumb thing that Sarah Connor does, and th that one thing comes from the fact that she's not the badass uh, Terminator killing Sarah Connor that we know from the series. It's her first appearance for when she's like, I think, a waitress. So right, she's a waitress. She's, she's afraid, she's lonely, she tries to call her mom, and she doesn't even like tell her where she is at first. Terminator, who is talking to her like as her mom, it's just like insisting and then she feels bad and tells her like it's still a stupid decision for sure but at least you can empathetically completely understand where it's coming from mm -hmm. and all the other characters who make stupid decisions like uh, um, Sarah Connor's roommate and her boyfriend mm -hmm. in their obnoxious sex <laughs> which is a character of its own in this film for sure right. that is a sequence that is complete absolutely complete with stupid horrid decisions but that that's just 80s like side character cannon fodder npcs that's right. that's what they're there for which it's it's completely fair to dislike right yeah maybe that's the only thing i don't know i just feel like like i really like the action and i really like all the appearances of arnold schwarzenegger and then like to me okay, those yeah. are the only only things that i like that's fair um, that's fair yeah the movie doesn't have it, the story is only centered around the action set pieces, unlike Terminator 2. Mm. There is no overarching idea, really. It's right. like, like, there's a fun concept of a time travel and how time travel loops with like John Connor's birth and shit, but mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a bunch of events that happen that led Kyle Reese and uh, Sir, the Terminator T-800 T right. clash with each other right. while fighting for the future of Sarah Connor and John Connor. That there's there's no real motive behind the story. There's I don't think maybe there is, and I just don't see it. But I don't think there is any sort of meaning behind it either. It's just cool, and that's it. And I can completely understand how it could be lacking to somebody who just like enjoys story and and meaning in their movies and i think that's completely fair to say but at least you have reasons to be excited for terminator 2.